So does anybody have an idea what, what this is? No? Well, it's the world's first digital camera. And uh, certainly it's one of the greatest technological inventions lately. And we all are using it uh, every day. So it was invented uh, back in 1975 by Steve Sassens, who worked for Kodak. And um, yeah, everything started with a man and his dream. And certainly with a box who was uh, not very shiny and nice. However, it was important for Steve to show that this idea is working. And today we all can buy digital cameras all around the world. So I'm not today here uh, to tell you that I've invented a new digital camera. Uh, however, also my journey started with a box. And um, I want to start with giving you a short technical insight about my box, which means my work. So probably all of you know what a solar cell is, right? So they're usually made out of silicon, and they are these bluish, shiny things, these panels which you have on, on rooftops. And um, certainly the job of a solar cell is to convert light into electricity, sunlight into electricity. And I started my career about 12 years ago when I was invited as a research scientist uh, at BSF. And I was part of a big uh, research project dealing with the topic of finding new materials which can be used to produce solar cells, so-called organic solar cells. Or with other words, we try to make solar cells out of paint. And my job as a research scientist was to characterize these solar cells electrically. And therefore, I used the setup which is depicted here on the slide next to me. So this setup contained basically three parts, which was a uh, light uh, simulator, an artificial sunlight, which is depicted on the left side, a lens, which is kind of collimating this light, and certainly a solar cell. And um, if you measure the current output or the power output of a, of a silicon-based solar cell, so again, the solar cells which you find on all rooftops, and uh, yeah, if you're measuring the current or power output at different positions uh, in front of the lens, then you will measure uh, that the current or power output is always exactly the same. And um, yeah, this can be understood very easily because uh, certainly since the light is collimated by the lens, uh, the diameter of the light spot has a different area. However, the amount of photons which are hitting the solar cell is all the time the same. And therefore also the power or current output is the same. So, um, yeah, we have done these measurements also a thousand times with so-called inorganic inorg solar cells, so the new solar cells which we produced at, uh, at our place. And um, yeah, one day about 10 years ago, we observed something really strange. And uh, probably we recognized it that day at the first time because this effect was so small, about nine orders of magnitude smaller compared to the signal we are looking for uh, usually. And um, yeah, the strange thing what we observed was uh, that the power or current output is highest in focus and it's lowest out of focus. And this actually was really annoying for us because this behavior is so different compared to a silicon-based solar cell. And certainly we thought in the beginning this is a measurement error, a cable is broken or maybe also a device is broken. And we started to exchange everything uh, to really avoid uh, that we have some incoupled noise or, or something like that. However, uh, the kink was always there. The curve was always there. And we started to realize since each point or the curve corresponded to a distinct distance between the solar cell and the light source, that would meant in return that we have discovered a new way of capturing distance or depth information which has never been seen or described anywhere before. So this was really amazing. And um, yeah, it was complete serendipity that we found out that this error is not a bug, it's a feature. And it was really fast clear to me that I want to drive this forward. And um, it was also clear to me that I would need a lot of money to do so. And uh, maybe you remember uh, the, the box of Steve from the first slide. 
So it was also clear to me that I would need such a box in order to have at least a decent chance to convince my management uh, to invest in this idea. So a small team and myself started to build a box as a hobby of us beside of our real job. And um, yeah, it took us about a year and we finished our first box. It was huge, about 130 kilograms. Uh, however, uh, it was working and it was the world's first distant measurement device which used the physical phenomena which he has discovered one year before. And um, actually we could convince our man management and they gave us money and first resources. So this really encouraged us and we continued and we used the resources and money to build quite some more boxes. Um, and we miniaturized the boxes in a way that they were fitting into a trunk of a car or the overhead bin of an airplane in order to show it to possible customers. Actually to talk and even more important, listen to customers about what is so special about our technology and why should somebody invest money into it? Or with other words, is it just a nice to have what we are doing or is it a must have? And I remember as it was yesterday when I showed up at our first potential customers at the Gamescom at Cologne. So I showed there up in a suit and tie and I really felt uncomfortable among all these game developers. And simply because so far my job was to develop technology, but not selling an idea. And this was a very, very important time in our journey and actually uh, myself, I learned quite a lot. So the good news was a lot of companies really liked what we did. They were, they were pretty excited. And um, having this tailwind, uh, we decided mid of 2014 that we want to combine the best of two worlds, which is the stability, the support, and the financial power of our mother company with the excitement, the flexibility, and speed of a mostly separate entity. And at January 1st, 2015, uh, the startup Trinamics was founded in order to have the speed and excitement in place, which is necessary to have a decent chance to finish our journey successfully. So, um, yeah, nobody in the world can make a product out of an idea alone, especially not a physicist like me. So you need friends, you need a team who's fighting for and with you every single day. And we set up such a team. And today our team contains of more than 70 employees working every day very hard with the goal creating a great piece of technology and building a great company. So the latest achievement uh, of the team is shown here on the slide. So it's actually uh, um, a prototype or a, a sketch of our product prototype. And we could miniaturize to an extent uh, that it's fitting into, into uh, nice electronics devices, which probably most of you have in their pockets this evening. So we read smart from form factor, and hopefully very soon our technology will be introduced in most of these devices. So <clears throat> it might sound easy uh, compressing a 10 years uh, journey into a 15 minutes talk uh, to, to make a product out of an idea, but I can tell you it's not. If you're starting from scratch and there are barely every references, you will make a lot of mistakes. And you have to learn a lot and you have to take a lot of risk. And in order to be successful, one thing is extremely important and you need it every single day. And this is luck. And you quite need a lot of luck every single day. And what I mean with having luck every single day, I want to explain to you with, with a story depicted here on the right side. So the gentleman on the very right, he was visiting a fair and presenting some of our uh, products there, and actually he broke his leg. So certainly this was not luck for him <laughs> to have a broken leg. However, uh, he went out uh, smoking a cigarette and met a gentleman who also broke his leg. <laughs> and they both started a very nice conversation and actually turned out to be a very valuable business contact for us. So this is the kind of luck I mean, which you need quite often. So I want to share my story with you this evening because I want to encourage you, everybody of you, 
to think out of the box, even if you're working in very established environments, for example, in big companies. Becoming a managing director or uh, standing in front of you this evening uh, certainly was not in my mind when I started my career. And um, looking back, following my heart and driving and pushing this discovery forward was one of the best decisions I made in my life, certainly beside marrying my wife and having three wonderful children. So sometimes all what you need is a box. And I'm very curious, how is your box looking like? Thank you very much.